so welcome everyone. Logic programming in Python. Um, well, you may not be aware of it, but you, you are probably already doing some logic programming in Python. Because whenever you access a relational database using SQL, you are using a language SQL, which is in many ways a logic programming language. So you feel at home here. Uh, but of course, the, the purpose of this presentation is not to talk about SQL, but lo logic programming in the wider context, uh, not just on, on databases. Thanks. Yes. Just to give you a feel of uh, what you can do in Python with uh, the, the PyDatalog library that I'm developing, uh, here is a factorial definition. And um, as you can see, there's no ifs, no loops. It's just the plain mathematical definition. Um, and, uh, and if you go in Wikipedia, that's, what ex that's exactly the same definition that you will see. So that makes program very, very readable. And that's one of the advantages of, uh, of PyDatalog. So what is logic programming, really? It's one of the three main programming paradigms. Uh, of course, the most popular one is imperative and object-oriented, with languages like C and Smalltalk. The functional language, functional programming is uh, typically Lisp and some other languages, like Haskell. And logic programming, at the top of my slide, is uh, represented by Prolog, but also uh, languages like SQL. And Python, in, uh, in this uh, schema, can be positioned here in the sense that it has a lot of uh, imperative language. It's, it's object-oriented and imperative. But it has also some functional uh, capabilities with uh, the functools library. But it doesn't have any logic programming capabilities today, except with the PyDatalog library. And the point of this is that with this uh, addition to Py Python, you have a wider range of techniques that you can use in your, pro in your, in your, in your, in your program and, have, uh, and have, have more fun using it. So you would use logic programming for exactly the same reason as you are using Python. If you have fun writing in Python, you'll have fun also writing in logic programming. Why? Because you can be very productive. The, a typical uh, logic programming program would be shorter than the equivalent Python program. And that makes you more productive. It's also more readable because you write at a higher level, at more, more at the business rule level, for example, more at a conceptual level. And, uh, and you can also place your, your logic statements in any order. And so you can follow ac actually your, your stream of thought rather than the sequence that the computer is asking for, for, uh, in, in imperative languages. So again, that makes your, your program more readable. And all that is possible because uh, logic programming is based on AI techniques, artificial intelligence techniques, and that also helps you uh, be more productive. And why doing logic programming in Python? For, I mean, to benefit from the Python infrastructure and, and the, 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 the nice and easy to learn language. Um, so you can, by, by using uh, PyDatalog, you have access to the full library of, of Python, which makes things very easy. And you can, with uh, SQL Alchemy, access uh, the many, many different types of databases. So let's look at some, uh, I mean, so wh what does a, a logic programming program uh, looks like? This is what you would see in a Prolog program. You have some statements that says that uh, condition one is true if the first argument is one. And condition two is true if the, the arguments are, are one and four. This is what is called um, asserting a fact. It's just entering some data in the knowledge base. You can also define some predicates using a clause. And you read this as saying that to prove that x and y, that predicate with argument x and y is true, you have to check that condition one is true for x and condition two is true for x and y. That's a, a way to, uh, to, 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 to write very gener general uh, business rules or, or logic <coughs> rules. And how do you use it? Interactively, you can uh, re query the predicates with some arguments. And because this is a 4 here, it will, look at four, it will insert 4 in all the rules here and go back to the condition, condition uh, or the facts that were asserted to, to find the answer. So uh, yeah, you can, can, can go. Yeah. 
So the, in a Pi data log program, we'll follow exactly the same structure, except for some small uh, syntactic changes. Like we use this symbol for uh, to, that reads if, and this is the and, and you have to use a print to actually print the, the answer. But that's really within a Python program, so you can really mix your traditional programming with a logic programming sentence. And that is possible, yes thanks to the pi data log library and this uh, function here create terms that gives to these words uh, i forgot to put some uh, there should be some quotes uh, around the, the, the string there the, the list of, of names but it gives to those words the logic uh, programming capability uh, to to and to and it gives you the option to use them in the logic clauses so here is some sample. See here I put the quotes that there should be some quotes like this on the previous slide. <coughs> um, let's give some s examples. This is a program to, to give you all the square roots of integers that are below three. And uh, this is uh, the actual program there. So the squares of x and y is true if x is in the range uh, 1 to 10, uh, 0 to 10, uh, so sorry, 0 to 9. <laughs> Uh, y is the square root of x and y is below 3. And then you can query it with different arguments here, x and y, 3y or x2, and it will give you the list of possible values, if any, that satisfy the conditions. The last, I mean, you, this typically you could also write in SQL, right? I mean, uh, if you had a table of integers, uh, it would be very easy to translate this. This is to show that uh, SQL and logic programming are quite similar. Yeah. Yep. The nice thing is, you see here, that uh, you can use the, the predicates with different inputs and outputs. 3 is an input, y is the output of your query. And with the same sentence, you have um, the same clause. You can use, you can, uh, you can use the same uh, logic in many different ways. That's what I call input-output polymorphism. And that makes, again, your program shorter because you don't have to write the, the equivalent of this, depending on whether x is an input or y is an input, the, the program will do it for you. So that makes for, for shorter programs. You can also recognize here that this is typically a loop. That would be a calculation. This is a test. So with this, you have the basic of, of, any, of any language. So you can, although it, it looks, they look the same in the way they are presented, they actually do very different things uh, in, on the, in the background. But the syntax is very, very simple. And then the last thing about this uh, small example is that I'm using the square root uh, function from the math library. So you have to declare it uh, to with this function to give it the magic capability of logic programming. But then you can use it in a, in a logic clause. And, uh, and so you really have batteries included there. One thing to comment here is that this actually does not work today with PyDatalog, but will come later when we'll have an equation solver. Because when you try to resolve this using that clause, you see that y is 2, and you are looking for the x that is corresponding to that. Uh, to the, today, PyDatalog doesn't know that the square root is the inverse of the square. And so, uh, but that will come later. It can be, it can be la later developed. So let's go back to the factorial uh, example. Um, first, uh, notice that f the x is 2 times x uh, is actually equivalent to, to this if you want to have the traditional logic programming presentation. So it's uh, you see the if here, and uh, that, that's the definition. So it's a shorthand notation, but that's very convenient. These functions only return one value, so they work very much like a dictionary except that it's dynamic because uh, it's calculating things rather than just looking at it from a database. Such functions ca can appear in an expression. That's what you see here. The factorial is on the left, but also on the right of the first uh, assignment. And the resolution starts with the latest clause. That is factorial, the one is one. And it stops on the first answer. So that's, what, that's how you avoid having ifs, because uh, by, by looping through re recursively to, uh, to the factorials, at some point it will stop when it arrives at factorial 1 is 1. 
Uh, you can look also on the website. Uh, they, are, they are support for aggregate functions. So you can write uh, cl clauses to calculate some uh, minimums, uh, the length of a, of a, of a list, etc. Um, here is a somewhat more complicated example. It calculates the, the solution to the eight queen problem in a very efficient manner. And I won't go into the details of it. I'll just point uh, some, some elements. Here, uh, this is the function that checks whether a queen attacks another queen. And there are three calculations. Um, the point is that uh, the, the, the calculations, the result of the calculations are memoized, they are stored in, in memory, so that whenever the engine needs to, to, to check whether this query is, this predicate is true, uh, it will just look up in the, in the, the, in the, in the in its knowledge base rather than calculate it again. So that makes program faster, but it also helps avoid infinite loop in a recursive program. For example, when you are gra traversing a graph, you may have loops. Thanks to that, you avoid uh, your program looping inf indefinitely, which is quite convenient. Um, another point is that you see here that the query includes a tuple of, of variables. And uh, you can uh, just slice it using the traditional Python uh, notation. So that gives you a lot of options on manipulating uh, data structures. Uh, finally, you can also mix in PyDataLog capability into one of your class. This is just an employee class with two attributes, like salary. And using a prefixed um, function like this, with employee.salary, the x is y, you can do also queries on, uh, on regular Python classes, or actually even databases, because it's, a, it's the same, same principle. So. That's already quite a lot of features, but there are some more. Like it runs on PyPy, so that uh, it can be compiled and run pretty, pretty quickly. It runs also on Python 2.7. I should put 2.7 there, and Python 3. You can uh, define some predicates in uh, pure Python, so that you can really mix logic programming and, 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 uh, and Python again in, in many different ways. And the advantage of writing some um, predicates definition in Python is that then you can use that to do some IOs, to look for uh, read files or whatever. And also for performance reason, you may want at some point to, to, to improve the speed of your program by writing things in Python, uh, in pure Python. It is thread safe, so you can use it in a logic, in a, in a web uh, framework that uh, uses multi-threading. And it's multimodal, so you can switch from one logic model to another. I'm not sure whether it's there's a lot of applications, but uh, who knows. So applications. This table shows the core technology in the library, the benefit that they bring, and typical applications for it. Um, go quickly over it. So there is uh, an intelligent resolution algorithm to resolve the, the queries by looking at all the logic clauses. And so you don't need to, to, to define the sequence of steps to, to do it. That brings uh, benefits like a spreadsheet type of programming, very, very interact, very, very quick uh, type of programming. And that can be used to develop expert systems for many types of application in, in ERP system, like uh, for a pricing engine, but also in uh, intelligent agents or robot controls, etc. It's, it's can the another technology is the input-output polymorphism that I mentioned. That uh, helps maximize code reuse, and it can be used for cross-database queries, in, for data integration, um, and, in, and in general, it, it's ma it makes programming faster. And then the intermediate results are memoized, so that's, uh, that helps in speed and infinite loop. Big, ap big applications are recursive algorithms. Uh, on tree and graph structures. Uh, code analysis may be an interesting topic to, to look at it, um, to, to do some static analysis of, of, of source code. Yeah. Yep. So it's sorry, uh, uh, go back one slide, yeah. For, forgot to mention that I got a mail from someone at AirSage uh, who is using it for big data application, and he said he had much fun using it. So, uh, uh, and I'm also using it at work uh, whenever I can. So. 
But uh, there are still things that can be done, of course. I mentioned the equation sol solver. Today, it's not possible to write this uh, because of the way the engine is done. But uh, that would not be too difficult to do. And then you would have really uh, a nice equation solver that would extend the, the use of, of the logic clause that you define. Um, then I mentioned that logic programming has many uh, relations to relational databases. There are things that are done on relational databases that could also be done on the logic programming uh, library, like uh, the, the, the concept of transactions. It would be nice, for example, to be able to assert new facts, uh, facts in, the, in the knowledge base of PyDatalog and uh, try to see if there are some uh, conflicting uh, clauses there. And if there are, be able to roll back the transaction and, re and re retract the, the facts that you tried, tried to assert. Uh, to do that validation of the data, it would be nice also to have logic clauses that would not look at the full database, but just at the, the, the data that you add, so on an incremental basis. Um, it would be nice to be able to also to define triggers uh, like you have on the database. Whenever something happens in the data, then I would like to have some actions to, to, be, to be done. That's not done today. The memoization of results, th these last two are more on the performance side. The memoization of results today is done query per query. So when you do another query, it doesn't know anything about what the previous query did. Uh, within a transaction, you could uh, improve speed by keeping previous results and, and, uh, and instead of, of calculating them again. Also, the <coughs> when you access uh, uh, the relational database through PyDatalog, the you actually do, f whenever you do, um, so it, it, it does it in piece pieces. And it, it would be more efficient to translate your logic query directly into a, s a SQL statement and get the, the work done at the server side rather than on the, the, the client side. <laughs> the reason is that, of course, relational databases have been optimized for many, many years, and it would be um, a, good, a good idea to use that uh, processing. These are just ideas. So if you have uh, more ideas, let me know. I would be more than happy to, to look at it. Last thing, once all the, the functionality are well developed, it would be good to look at performance and to optimize some of the, the code in the engine to run uh, in C and, and, and in comp compiled, so that would be much faster. And also, an area of interesting research would be to, to translate the logic clause that you give into a multi-threaded program. Because this is declarative and the program, the, the, the engine sequences the steps to, to resolve it, it could have the intelligence also to distribute the work on different uh, uh, machines or cores uh, to improve speed. So that would be quite interesting. And I think uh, that's it. Um, I'll be happy to take questions. I'll, if you see someone with a funny hat uh, later today, uh, come, b come to him and talk to him about PyDatalog. He will be very happy to, to get your feedback. So uh, with this, thank you for your attention. Any questions? Yes? How do you typically write and do statements? Is there a kind of blocking mechanism? Right. Indeed. So what you can do in a close, you can do um, a special um, um, you can use message, message boxes where, where you, sh you display the, or, or log the type of, uh, of uh, parameters that the, the function has. Mm -hmm. You can also activate a logging um, flag that will get then use the, the, the logging functionality of PyDatalog and write either to the, the console or to a file. So yeah, it's possible. Do you have backtracking capabilities? How does it work? Like in Prolog, do you want to calculate all the answers for Right, exactly. It's looking at all the, the, the possible answers that satisfy the conditions going through all the clauses. Yes, yeah. Ah, pardon, okay. Yes? Right, yeah. Sure. Yeah, the last question was whether you had also 
the PyDetalog library had backtracking in the same way as Prolog does. And indeed, the, the PyDetalog capability has the, the capability to look at a query and provide all the answers looking at all the options that are, that are available. Yes? Do you think that uh, the logic programming can uh, completely replace the interactive programming in case of Python with PyDownload? Or is it more like uh, using it in a hybrid? Um, I think it's uh, in hybrid uh, type of mode because uh, Datalog is not a uh, full uh, Turing complete language. So there are things that are more difficult to do in Datalog than others. But in all the other areas, Datalog can be quite benef beneficial compared to, uh, to Python. So also in terms of performance, uh, of course, Python will be faster today than, than, than what PyDetalog can, can ever go. And so I see really a complementarity between the three. And that's why I wanted to embed logic programming within Python rather than make a separate language. Yeah, yes, well, it does not write to a relational database, right? It, it has its own knowledge base internally, yeah. but you can look at it really as a database. Indeed, you put facts in it, you put rules that would, rules that would be similar to views on, 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 an, on an Oracle database, and then you write query statements to get the data out of it. That's how quite, uh, quite smart. So it's very close to a database, yes. All right. Don't forget, if you want to talk to me uh, later, I'll be happy to. Thank you. Mm -hmm.